Hiya. Yeah. Well, some of you might have clicked on this title and been working out in your own head. Why? Only on the starboard side. Maybe you're thinking it's something to do with uh, the same reason we drive with everybody sitting on the same side. The side closer to the middle of the road so that we can judge clearance. Maybe if two carriers meet in the middle of the ocean, they need to judge the clearance as they pass. Uh, no, that's not it. And if that ever was to happen, they would pass port side to port side, the way ships do. The reason is all to do with aircraft, and the root cause is probably to do with the fact that we're all right-handed. So we're predominantly right-handed. No offence to the lefties there. Sorry. Uh, let's get into it. So, welcome to my little channel. Hopefully you get something from this. This is not your typical carrier-based aircraft, but it'll do the job nicely for me to explain a few things. And uh, thanks to Rowan for loaning me this. Now, you're probably familiar with the principles of flight, the forces that act upon an aircraft. Gravity, the big one. The force generated by the engine pull it forward and then there's low pressure over the wings create lift and I suppose the prevailing wind will have an impact on where the plane goes and I suppose the uh, the fourth force would be the pilot who moves the control surfaces and sends the plane hither and thither through the sky but there are four other forces you may not be aware of the weirdest one of these is called gyroscopic precession. Now gyroscopic precession takes effect on a spinning disc. If you have a spinning disc such as the propeller of an aircraft and you apply a force to that in one direction there will be a corresponding force in a different direction at 90 degrees to that. It's hard to explain but if you have an aircraft for example flying along at this angle, about to land, or accelerating down a runway, and then it tips forward. The movement of that disc, that spinning disc, that affects the sideways movement. Now I'm swinging this backwards and forwards in one axis. But if I turn on this fan, there's a definite sideways force that I can feel as I swing it back and forward in the same axis. That's gyroscopic precession. Planes such as early, early planes like Sopwith Camels, any early plane where it had a rotary engine where all the pistons were spinning as well, that had a huge effect on their characteristics when they were flying. And the likes of a Sopwith Camel would be able to turn easily in one direction and not in the other direction because of the fact, especially if diving or climbing, because of the, f the sideways effect of this gyroscopic precession. Uh, it's, this is counterintuitive, but the best way to describe it, to explain it, is uh, that I can think of. When I was a kid, there was a game we played at school called Conkers. You had a chestnut, drill a, drill a hole in the middle, put a boot lace through the shoelace through the chestnut with a knot in the end and your chestnut would hang like a pendulum and somebody else would try and break it with their chestnut and then you take a turn at theirs. And if you smash their chestnut, your one went up by a score and you, re you kept it, your favorite chestnut with its high score. If I had a chestnut on a boot lace and I was swinging it around, if I was swinging it clockwise like this, and then I was to tip at the top of the arc I was to tip it give it a bit of a push forward and at the same time at the bottom of the arc give it a bit of a tip backwards what effect would that have on the spinning chestnut tipping it forward would tend to push it forward as it passed that 12 o'clock position and tipping it backwards at the bottom would push it backwards as it went past the six o'clock position. This spinning disc would tilt that way, would tilt to the side. 
a spinning lace and chestnut disc as such as if I was spinning it fast would move sideways even though the only force that I'd applied was forward and backward uh, in this axis it would result in a rotation this way the vast majority of planes have their propellers spinning clockwise from the pilot's point of view if they go if they tip from that to that there is a sideways component on that spinning disc that's one little force that is felt by a plane that you might not have thought of a second one is called the p factor or the p effect and it's best described as asymmetric thrust again it comes back to the spinning propeller and the propeller spinning clockwise like almost all propeller planes do and we look why in a minute when a propeller is spinning it's biting into the air forcing the air back and pulling the plane forward these this little propeller is pitched the right way for clockwise rotation if a plane is at an angle like this plane before it takes off it's speeding up down the runway or a plane coming into land on an aircraft carrier the propeller is in this plane but the plane is moving this way it's not like that it's like that the result is that the propeller blades that are moving down on this side of the plane they're biting into the air at a much better angle giving more thrust than the blades that are coming up the other side which they're all the same like that but the blades coming up the other side are tipped back so they're flatter they're biting the air with less thrust than on this side as they come down so there is more thrust from this half of the propeller than that half of the propeller the resultant force is to yaw the plane to the left so if you have a plane approaching for a landing and then it's aborted first thing the pilot will do is put the throttle forward rapidly increase the revs there will be a sideways a leftward force operating on the plane that's two of the four another one comes back again to the clockwise turning propeller forcing slipstream to spiral around the body of the aircraft there's a great photograph of a corsair on the deck of an aircraft carrier i don't know is it sea spray or rain that's caught in the slipstream but it, it indicates it very well slipstream rotates around the fuselage of the aircraft and when it gets to it'll be going clockwise after the uh, propeller so when it it'll go this way and when it comes around and hits the vertical stabilizer of the tail the force on that tail will be to turn it to the left again and the fourth force the big one is torque torque is the force exerted back on the engine by the spinning propeller as it meets resistance um, newton's laws of physics here every action has a reaction imagine yourself pushing a, a supermarket trolley full of cans of beans and then imagine yourself trying to do that with roller blades on a plane on the ground will feel the force of the torque as it accelerates the engine the air the propeller meets resistance and there'll be a force back on the engine of the plane when it's actually in the air there's nothing to stop it it's it's a little bit more it's a lot more noticeable the, the effect of the torque and um, if you've ever drilled into metal and the drill bit has caught in the metal you will feel it snap at your wrist when the, the drill the torque goes back into the drill so if you rapidly put the throttle forward in a plane to increase your speed as that spinning propeller meets resistance it will put force back into the engine now if you're talking about military planes fighter planes they've got massive engines and uh, the force of the torque is quite noticeable and if you're unprepared for it 
I'm told it could even flip the plane over. Again, a plane descending to an aircraft carrier's deck gets waved off or aborts for some other reason. The pilot will ramp up the volume and uh, the throttle and suddenly the plane will feel a strong force of torque that will tend to tip it this way. That's why there are various forces operating on a plane that will bring it to the left. That's why planes, even on, on old airfields, the, if they're flying circuits, they would always go in a left-hand circuit. And it's why aircraft carriers have their island on the starboard side. Because behind the island, the, when a plane is operating off an aircraft carrier, the aircraft carrier will face into the wind. That's to give the plane every chance of getting lift to make it easier to fly slowly, get more lift for takeoff or for landing. Behind the superstructure of the carrier, there will be a cone of turbulence and exhaust. And you don't want your plane that's aborting a landing to be turning into that. It's much better if it tends to go the other way. Now these are highly trained naval aviators. Uh, coping with all these forces becomes second nature to them, obviously. But even so, you don't want to be relying on somebody having to get it right every single time you want to allow for somebody getting it a little wrong or being caught unawares and that's why you would choose if you had a choice to put it on the safe side that's what happened by the way if you ever want to wind up a naval aviator you could always tell them the story of the uh, the RAF squadron in Norway in 1940 when uh, they had to abandon their airfield and they uh, they all flew out to the carrier HMS Glorious and they all landed perfectly without incident by no tail hooks or nothing. They just had a couple of sandbags in the back of the plane. They'd never been trained to land on a carrier and, and they all did it fine. Um, uh, in case you ever want to, to wind up some naval pilot about the mystique of carrier flying. Um, of course they got lucky and the weather I think was very calm. It's obviously a, a, a great skill to be able to fly off a carrier in pitching deck in all weathers um, consistently but uh, you might out of devilment want to wind somebody up just for the crack that story squadron uh, I think it was 48 squadron look it up carrier HMS Glorious Norway 1940 so why does an aircraft have a propeller that spins clockwise they don't all. Uh, some Russian planes did not have propellers spinning clockwise. Uh, and I think I'm right in saying the Spitfire Mark 7, they changed from a Rolls-Royce Merlin to a more Rolls-Royce Griffin. And I think that went the other way. But you might want to check on that. Um, but predominantly, aircraft with propeller engines have them spinning clockwise. You're all, with the torque and everything, by having a plane going the other way, it's going to be a bit awkward for the pilot to get used to it if all he's ever flown is planes going clockwise. So there's a logic to keeping them the same. But why clockwise? There are two different theories that I've come across. Um, nobody's certain when you go investigating this. Nobody's certain, but they talk about two things that are likely. Early planes were started by hand. Planes still are started by hand, where you, you prime the engine, you turn on the magneto, and you grab the propeller. Someone says contact and you turn it by hand. It has been suggested, you've seen this in the movies I'm sure, it has been suggested that it's easier for right-handed people to do that. Swinging down on it this way. I don't know, maybe we're just so used to it going that way. Um, if you, if you go to if you were to go to put your shoulder through a door like they do in the movies you would go you would lead with your right wouldn't you um if you're right-handed maybe naturally that's the way you would grab a propeller and that's why they did it maybe it's safer maybe grabbing a propeller and swinging it down that way means you're not liable to be as in front of the propeller as you might be if you went the other way that's one theory i like the other one which is uh 
why are car engines going clockwise most of the time car and truck engines the early engines and ever since went anti-clockwise because they were started by hand occasionally as well I even remember our earliest car when I was a kid was a Morris Minor and I'm pretty sure that had a hand crank that you could use instead of jump starting it to turn the engine early cars did you turn the engine and I think a right-handed person would find it easy and natural to turn the engine by pulling up the weight of the engine first starting at the bottom you'd pull it up this way that'd be a lot easier I think than going the other way that seems unnatural pulling it up to start it so your engine having engines that turn clockwise from the front makes sense and these people who made those engines would be the people who went on to make engines for aircraft and the power takeoff is at the back of the the, the shaft and all is at the back of the engine but if you want to put that into a plane you need it at the front so you just take the engine and turn it around and put your propeller shaft and everything at the front so that would then go clockwise as you look from the rear that seems to make sense to me there were two aircraft carriers built by the Japanese with the islands on the port side the Akagi and the Hiryu now Japanese aircraft carriers worked in pairs when they had two aircraft carriers and they were setting their planes off on a mission they, they would basically all take off and form up in a big circle that would go around the two carriers they'd go off on their mission when they were all assembled they'd come back from their mission and then they would circle and circle and eventually get everybody down onto the decks of the two carriers the Japanese thought they could speed this process up by having two carriers and two circles you could do this with two normal carriers but you would have to space them out very wide and if you were to do that then you would be stretching your destroyer screen really wide and you'd be taking up an awful lot of ocean so you, your defenses would be really stretched but also it'd be easier for any enemy reconnaissance to come reconnaissance planes to come across you because you're taking up so much ocean so they decided they would have two aircraft carriers with the one of them would have the turret on the superstructure on the other side the island on the other side then they could run two circles have the planes go off come back form two circles and all land independently effectively um, but they found it didn't really make much of a difference so there was no more of that both those carriers by the way were lost at the Battle of Midway so there you are um, I think that explains it right I think that went well hope you enjoy that bye now mind yourselves